he might slot in most effectively. Candidly, Fernando may be the um, one of the more trickier ones about where he slots because fairly obvious reasons, he's got speed and power. And so you love the opportunity to him to get on and be at the top, which you could get from power that spot. You also think about, back to Ace's point about lineups, is you know there is something to be said for guys sitting at the top to turn that line over over um, and get, create that extra at bat. Um, have a better chance for it, just basic math. But um, you know, Toddy can be at the top, be a disruptor on the bases, going to be a disruptor anywhere he's at. But you also, he's got the power, can drive and run. So he's he's um, he's built for every part of the lineup at the top. So um, we'll figure out the pieces around him where they fit as well, and and be strategic for with him. Also, we spoke with Manny yesterday. He sounds like he's doing pretty well in his in his rehab, and he's doing a lot of things. What? Um, Knowing that he's feeling good and everything, kind of how important is it also to understand the length of the season and getting him through that? Yeah, so a couple things to unpack. I just got to see that beautiful Manny Machado smile yesterday. You know, he shows up and he's got a he's got a beautiful radiant smile going. He feels good about where he's at. So that's probably the you know best barometer for me. Um, and then you know being smart about he feels great. Rehab's going well. Um, you know, our medical team does a phenomenal job and, and have done their part. Um, but Manny's the one that carried the mail on this and went to San Diego, spent his offseason there, was really intentional about it, dedicated his offseason to it, um, and was very intentional about getting to the place he is now, which is a good place. Now it's about, to your question, AJ, about what the season looks like, the long season. Um, we have a plan for that. The good news is we have a player with, you know, 10 plus years of major league experience that knows how, um, although he's been healthy and posted pretty much every year, every game, um, but he does know how to self-regulate and he'll, he's got an acute awareness of his body based on his experiences and we'll listen to him. Where's more hone at? I know he was a bullpen today, but like, where is he at health-wise and how do you see more home being used? Yeah, I'm glad you brought him up. Um, more Hone's had a great off season. He's had a really, I mean, I feel like our, our group, our players, have won the offseason, but Adrian's towards the top of that list. Um, in a good place mentally, physically. Um, Ruben's really happy. Adrian's really happy how the ball's coming out, all his pitches and shapes, um, how he's going about his work. He's in good shape, um, and everything's coming out great. You know, as far as using him, the good news is, you know, this guy has started. You know, I think we likely see him more in a in a like a longer reliever you know multi-inning um, but how he pitches and how he goes about it he could turn it into a lot of different roles so he's in a great spot and he's ready for the competition for spring training I'm excited to watch him perform with Manny I mean watching him throw yesterday it all looked really good uh, were, were you guys surprised with where he's at heading into spring training is he ahead of where you thought he might be at at this point uh, we're definitely pleased I wouldn't say surprised, but definitely very, very pleased. Um, the ball's coming out really good. I didn't see anything with any forced actions. Um, everything looked natural. Looked like Manny looked really good. Um, so really pleased. And again, credit credit to Manny for what he's done. And and um, he's in a good spot. I know you said you listened to how he feels, but do you expect him to be playing third base on March 20th? Um, I think there's a good opportunity for that. Um, I'll clearly reserve the body work takes place between now and then. Um, but I know his head has, a, of course, it has a desire for him to be at third base on March 20th. He's he's tracking in a in a really good spot to get there. But I can't say anything in absolutes. But he's in a good place to put himself in a position to be there on March 20th. What what are your defensive options there if he needs to start the season at DH or take a few days here and there? Yeah, I mean, so you've got good news is, you know, um, it wouldn't be good news if Manny wasn't there. Obviously, he starts maybe DHing, but um, the good news as a secondary uh, alternative was, um, you know, Kimmy won the gold glove as a utility role, so that could be a possibility. Um, you know, Rosario went out and had a good good winter ball, played well at the end of last offseason at third base when Manny was out. So clearly an option. Matt Batten played uh, a nice third base and did a good job. 
uh, and has had a really good offseason. He's coming in looking looking good as well. Um, you know, Tyler Wade, utility guy that's had some, you know, four years of big league time. So, you know, we got McCoy competing for an infield spot. Um, you know, so that's a good list of guys right there that have some have some opportunities. Um, but we're clearly um, looking for Manny to, to be there. But we'll see what see what, see what we have when he gets there. What was it like from your perspective last year, seeing the team come into so many big time opportunities to win games and that sort of thing? And it seemed like it just kind of never came around for them. Yeah, you know, listen. I mean, you know, there's there's a lot of factors in it. You know, it's it's becoming more in our rearview mirror. Um, I alluded to the lineups, the questions about the lineups. I'm I'm way more optimistic and using my mental energy as our players are, and the encouragement is is that we're moving forward with. Um, not only create, creating opportunities, but executing when we get those opportunities. And, and uh, a lot of intentionality going into it, a lot of energy going into it. And um, I'm confident a lot of positive execution will take place because of it. Yeah, so how, how do you do that? Because you can't force a hit, right? Like, so how do, you, how do you approach those situations? How do you prepare now to give yourself the best opportunity to be successful in those spots? Well, one of my many mentors, George Kissel, you know, would say, you're only good at what you work on. So, and I won't misrepresent it wasn't worked on in the past. All I can represent is what we're doing moving forward. And um, there's a real intentionality of what that looks like. There's a mindset to what that looks like. You know, as I said it earlier, every at bat is a situation. So that's effectively how we're going to compete at every turn. You know, this, this is the situation and our job partnering with our players to be ready for that situation mentally and physically and, and then put the time in in both those veins to to be able to execute, and the more you do it, the more it becomes more natural, and and um, it feeds upon itself. So, is the term "situational hitting" a bit misleading? Because um, you regard? tend to think of though just big leverage spots, that sort of thing. But oh uh, yeah, no, I think uh, well, I don't know if it's misleading, but it's um, the way we capture and define it is like I said, every at bat is a situation, and if you're sitting and you're working with every opportunity we get in the cage or BP or live BP or spring training games or in actual games, and then we have a feedback loop that we can talk and share about what we were thinking, how we were approaching things, um, and with the best of getting better mentality, then um, we'll be better for those situations, and we'll have worked on them, and then it becomes um, a little more second nature.